Hello creative friends. Today we are going to paint together this painting which features a stunning blue border-like background which gives it a very vintage feel, something that will help your painting pop a little bit more. It's the first time I'm showing you how I do a background. So if this sounds interesting to you, you want to learn, let's dive right into the video. If you've been hanging around my channel for a while, I really, really thank you. But if you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, please do. It will help me grow my channel. It will help the YouTube algorithm know that you like my stuff. So uh, with that said, let's dive right into the painting. All right, let's look at the reference picture that we are going to paint from. I adore this book. It is from the library. It's called Petal Illustrations by Adriana uh, Picker. And I think I'm going to have to buy this book, you know. I don't think I can uh, borrow this from the library too long. But I am going to paint this rose little uh, arrangement here. And I'm so drawn to it because of uh, the lightness of the pink, the neutrality of that brown rose at the back, and the different colours and pops of green. So I'm going to set my book up here on my little book stand. Always have a little book stand. Um, nothing too fancy, just a plastic book stand from Office Works. And for this paper, I'm going to use my Saunders Waterford 100% cold press 300 GSM. It's a 10 by 14 um, pad, sorry, not pad, block. And uh, 10 inches by 14 inches, so it's quite large. I like to paint large. I am probably going to use my um, half, sorry, three quarter inch Princeton Heritage brush. I have, this is a new one that I just bought because um, it's really literally pretty much almost similar to the old one, but it's actually a little bit shorter. So I'm not sure how that would turn out and um, it's got a cool plant, transparent um, handle. And now for the paints, my usual regular tube paint of different brands. All of this can be found in the description below, the links to where to buy them. Of course, I've got my two jars of water here, a paper towel, and let's, let's go. I have sprayed down my paints already, so make sure you do that with a spray bottle. And I'm going into this very wet, old, dirty pink water as I do at the start of perhaps 70% of the paintings, okay? Just grab a bunch of dirty water there and I'm going to start with this wet on dry, dry paper, wet brush. Using the corner of the brush to just pull down the first petal there, dipping my brush into some water to continually pull down the first petal and then ending at the corner as well. So this is how I love to um, manipulate or rather handle my, um, my square brush or my flat brush. Or I'm finding that pink a bit dull. So what I'm doing is just dropping in some uh, opera pink, opera rose, and then going again and just loosely get the next petal in. And uh, I like to work fast and quickly, not because I'm in any hurry, but um, I just feel like if I take too long, um, I'll tend to, I don't know, overthink it maybe. So I like to just go with the natural pace that I, I, I have and I totally uh, encourage you to do the same, you know. You will find your own pacing. Oh my God, the sun has just suddenly shone through the clouds again. So I hope that looks okay. Yeah, it still looks fine. Um, so I've got that first flower here and I'm quite happy with it. And I'm gonna go and do the bigger one here. And just for fun, I usually don't change up brushes like that, but I really want my the second flower, pink one to be quite big. So I'm going to move to my one inch flat, all right? You don't have to, but I'm just gonna see whether that makes a big difference or not. Getting into that same dirty water mix. And yeah, because you know, sometimes my mind wants to create a bigger flower, but somehow 
it just doesn't happen. I don't know if you've experienced that as well. And yes, I'm feeling like this one inch flat is helping me to just get a bigger, just bigger flower in general. All right, I'm coming back to the three quarter inch because that one was nice and big and it did its job of getting that big flower here. And now I'm just going to drop, I think, some, oops, my doggy is still going, some more intense pink into the middle of these blooms, okay, both of them while they're still wet. While they're still wet, just dropping it in and just let it flow. So it's not flowing as much as I'd like it to because I think um, obviously the sun is shining on my painting so everything is drying up a little bit faster. And then from here, I'm going to just turn the brush around and to pull out these veins that I see in my reference photo. And I think that creates a really lovely natural veiny effect. I believe it's called scratching. Scratching really works well with veins and grass and other things that you can do in watercolor. Cool. All right, so right now, I think let's try to just drop a little bit of that opera again, just to some bits on the petals here so that there's just some more wet on wet action going on. So, because you can see I, I'm using two different pinks. This one's Opera, and the other one that I dropped in the middle is Permanent Rose, PV19. All right, so I kind of feel like I want this petal to touch this petal. So what I'm doing is I'm just softening the edges and that's the beauty of using 100% cotton. You can alter the shape of your, of your painting by just re-wetting the edges. And as you see, it's just softened and bleeding into each other now. I love that. It's looking really nice. All right, so let's do the one more here. And this one is just slightly smaller. Just flowing and is slightly upturned, looking up or rather like a three-quarter view with the bottom petal just shorter like this. Okay, so same thing. I'm just going to drop the PV19 permanent rose into the middle here. Okay, and then turning my brush to pull out some veins. Voila! Don't you just love it? Don't you just love the ease of uh, loose florals? I mean, sometimes I have the mood to go into a bit more um, intensity and detail and all that. But most of the time, I really enjoy just being very loose and expressive. And looseness, you know, there's just so much wonderful qualities to it. It's how you just get really... Um, not so hung up on details and pedantic and just let let things flow. I'm grabbing some yellow, yellow lemon, lemon yellow and just dipping into the center of my flower now. Just onto all three. And just let it softly bleed. I love it. Okay, let's move on to the other two brown neutral tone uh, flower. I'm going to grab some burnt umber and I'm just going to mix it up into this bit here where it's got a bit of all sorts of colour and really you don't have to be too uh, clean about this. I don't mind a bit of muddiness because sometimes it, it adds to the whole uh, naturalness of naturalness, naturalness of the painting. So let's do that. I like that. I like that first stroke. So I'm just creating more of a angular shape with the brush here, which is what I'm seeing in reference actually. Leaving a bit of white space and just going behind slightly this one here. And then this one here, 
just facing the other direction. It's a similar size, they're both similar size, touching the other rows as you go. Very cool. I'm going to get a bit of gamboge, which is a dark, warm yellow and dropping that into the center of the flower. Right now, I'm going to grab a bit more of a buttery consistency of burnt umber and just going to drop that. Oh, wow. What happened? That's not burnt umber. That's kind of Payne's Grey. I think it's contaminated. It's okay. It's okay. Let's try again. A bit of, there we go, burnt umber, just into the middle here. Oh gosh, what's setting my doggy off again? Dahlia, calm down. And then I'm going to do the same thing, turn the brush around, and then just get that soft veins. You can allow the veins to go all the way to the end of the petal or not. Up to you and what you like, all right? Oh, how gorgeous is that? Okay, so I have the five flowers here and in floral composition, we like to use odd numbers. So three, five is a really good number to have in your floral composition. Okay, I'm quite excited now because there are two different greens that I see on my reference. One is a cooler green. So I'm going to use this green I don't often use at all. It's like a peacock green, I believe it's called peacock green. I'm not even sure if this is my Daniel Smith one or this other Japanese brand I bought. It's how not frequently I use it. And then I'm going to just put just a tiny bit of sap green. Or is it olive green? Just to bring it down a tad, okay? So it's not that... Um, intense and crazy bright. I'm gonna pull the first stem here from this rose down and just gonna let it come down and then just another one up that way just out of the page. It's very cool and painterly to have your florals go out of the page sometimes, isn't it? Uh, I'm gonna have one leaf there like this and actually I'm going to drop some olive green into that to just give a bit of variety and uh, variation okay and using that brush filled with that a mix of olive green and that other green just bringing out a few different leaves oops that one's got a squarish point to it so we can just alter it no worries and then let's see all right let me drop a bit more of that peacock green in here just to kind of like even things out a little bit you can even lift some of the color off your leaves to give it a highlight it's always a neat trick to do so dry off your brush and just wipe off paint and then wipe off which sounds odd at the beginning you think like oh my god am I wasting paint I'm actually wiping off and putting it down wiping off but you know what a little bit of watercolor paint goes such a long way it doesn't matter that's what I tell myself okay I put a bit of shadow green to just um, give that a bit of a shadow edge okay now I'm going to put some really light yellow leaves here so I have this green gold this is green gold from, I think, my Mission Golds, Mission Gold set. Yeah, Magello Mission Gold. And I think it's not even uh, light enough. I'm going to add this very bright yellow into it as well. A nice, light, bright yellow. Get that stem going and there's a leaf that's just going out like that. There's one leaf two leaves one going behind and just one shooting out of the page like that 
Just another one here, picking out this way. And then just dropping it, the other green, into maybe the middle to sort of have it harmoniously work with the rest of the painting. I really, really like that very much. I am going to grab my liner brush, which is this one here. It's basically a small brush, but it's got a long bristle here. And this is really cool to make uh, just thin veins. So grabbing that into my shadow green and just pulling a vein from the center of these light leaf while it's still wet, okay? Because I think it's kind of cool. And then making veins. And this is all down to your preference now, right? You can leave it if you like, if you prefer another look. But um, because I did the veins on the petals here, I thought this is going to be a nice touch as well. Perfect. At this stage, we're going to leave um, the painting to dry and then we'll come back in a bit when it's dry to create some lovely but simple details. See you soon. Okay guys, we are back. We are back with the painting. It is almost dry and I want you to be, let's have a look again at the reference photo. And you know what? I'm actually at this point where I am not sure how I'm going to um, layer this painting so that it looks strongly like my own and not trying to copy her, um, this painting, because she did such a great job um, with the beautiful painting and I'm almost like inside me want to just, you know, pay homage to it and, and follow it to a T. So let's see how we go, okay? You're on, you're with me on this, on this little um, journey here. Okay, let's go. Intuitively, I am grabbing my size six round and I want to create a deeper uh, center for these flowers. So cadmium yellow there to just go over the center once again with a deeper yellow. Oh yeah, and there's one more up there. That's right. I chose uh, gamboge to be the center of this flower, so it's a slightly warmer yellow there. And my gamboge is from M. Graham, and I love that so much. It's a gorgeous color. Um, okay, so... Grabbing my size 4 silver black velvet round and I'm going to use this to get some beautiful, simple uh, shadows happening, shadows and vein lines for the large flowers, okay? So just using that to kind of outline some of the petals and accentuate some of those um, veins that's coming from the center of the flower. Let the brush just um, dance across the petal, diluting some of the pigment if it feels a bit harsh and creating like a gradual um, gradient for your petals so sometimes when we layer we can get a bit harsh right but sometimes we want that we want the contrast but then sometimes the contrast becomes too intense and then you're like oh okay let's dial it back down and that's the dance. That really is the dance of um, making micro decisions with the marks you want to make, with the intensity of the water. So just using water now. And 
and I am moving to the next flower, not messing around too much with it. Finding a pace and a flow that you're comfortable with. I do tell myself to slow down sometimes because sometimes I am just rushing ahead of myself and I don't even know why, right? Sometimes I know I feel like I'm chasing some kind of, um, uh, I don't know, chasing an imaginary sort of uh, train, not train, I'm not sure what I'm saying, but you know what I mean. I don't know if you guys feel that too sometimes when you paint in watercolor, you feel like you need to hurry up. So I'm forcing myself to slow down and to find I'm going to swap over to the fatter one, my size 8 round, because I'm feeling like those strokes are just a tad too, um, too thin for this, for this flower here. And they're becoming a little bit like worms <laughs> dancing across the page. And it's fine. I'm not sure what, how I feel about how it all looks at the moment. But that's okay. So with watercolor, you can always just add water to erase <laughs> and soften. Not really erase, but soften, all right? All right, pulling back, just looking at everything through my um, the camera lens. That helps sometimes. All right, and swapping back to the thinner one to work on this one here. All right, so just... And I'm I'm realizing like as I as I get more um, experience and practice, I am learning different things at different stages of this journey, isn't it? Some paintings I am learning um, a certain technique, I'm focusing on it, and then in other paintings, I'm focusing on a different technique. And I think that is the way to go because you can't learn everything and get everything right in all of the times that you paint, you know? So some paintings, I am more into the paying attention to detail and some paintings, I'm you know, enjoying the flow a little bit more. And even in this one, I realize this flower is a little bit more detailed than the rest. And I'm following the, the reference a bit more and I'm just observing how the veins are flowing within the flower rather than making it up on my own. That's fine. It's okay. All right, let's go on to the brown flowers, the brown rose. Mixing up burnt umber, a touch of Payne's Grey to darken, to give it some just slightly darker lines. And for this one, I don't want to go too crazy. I just want to, you know. Be respectful. <laughs> and don't go too much there. All right. Very nice. Um, let's do some veinings on the leaf. So grabbing the shadow green, just mixing it up with all the greens that I had on my palette so that there is some uniform harmony, I mean. And you can, as I said, do as much or as little veins as you like. 
making them as intentional and detailed or not and just play with the different marks play with the brush strokes and have fun don't take it too seriously like if I can film a video knowing that lots of people are gonna watch it and still be loose and have fun you certainly can as well you really can it's really no big deal what do you have to lose oh I'm just adding one more leaf here as you can see just decided to add one more leaf this felt a bit empty right there yeah what have you got to lose okay at this moment I am just feeling like oh something's obviously missing and what's missing is some really lovely you know the creepy stamen-y stamen things that should emerge from the middle of the flower but I can't do that until I'm fully letting that bit dry because I've done it before and it always turns out a bit gobbly mess so let's pause a little while again while we wait for that yellow center to dry and all that bits to add the final stamens all right so again it's not super duper duper dry but i think it's safe now to go in there so i have my size 2 round princeton heritage to do these finer details i must admit i am uh, not the most patient person when it comes to detail um, uh, stamen stuff so but you know what the times where I am I, I, I am so grateful that I do so you know I'm gonna I'm gonna make the effort this time to be patient so grabbing the yellow I'm going to just make some really easy yellow dots around the flower here and on this one as well so try to make it more random as possible. So some big, some small, some closer to one another. Don't have them evenly spaced. And I, um, this was, I've, I've shared this before, but this is one of the things that I find incredibly strange and challenging when it came to like painting and art and, and painting flowers was, you know, our whole lives we've been taught to make things uniform, make things straight, equidistant, that sort of training. And here we are trying to untrain that. I'm trying to untrain myself from making everything look so eh. So um, I find that incredibly uh, something so new that I, I, I have to learn or rather unlearn to be more random, to be more um, ununiformed, you know. Okay, I'm finding this size 2 round is still a little bit too fat. So I'm going back to my silver black velvet, which has a really nice, excuse me, nice thin point. Alright, so for the lines that connect the stamen to the flower, I'm going to go into my Payne's Grey, which is almost like a black. And it's different from my image, which is a pink, but I think for drama, I will need to actually make it a little bit more contrasty so I'm just using the black to connect these yellow bits to my stamen hmm. Just taking your time. Don't overdo it. Cool. I kind of like that. Shall we do the same for the, the top one here? So same thing. Grabbing a bit of that yellow. Up there. Some down here. And then a bit of that black. And you might get some bleeds happening, but then that's fine. Already it feels just a little bit more uh, 
looks a little bit more coming to life. Yes. Um, okay, so for these up here, I'm noticing this really dark line and this one doesn't have that dark line. So I just need to work on that. Grabbing my burnt umber mixture and just creating a few more darker, deliberate outlines for my oops, brown flowers up here. Okay, and then for these right, instead of doing the stamen bits, what I'm going to do, flipping back to a smaller, stiffer round brush. Where is my size too? There we go. And I'm going to just grab a dark blackish mix like I did. And I'm going to basically just create a darker stamen. Oh no. Okay, that orange is not completely dry yet. So I'm just going to... Gently wipe it off and try again. So with a drier surface now. So it's feeling awkward because I don't want to um, lay my hand down on any bits that might be a little bit wet still. Okay. Just a bit of detail. Beautiful. And I think I'm missing one little line here. And maybe just some darkness. Darker green all the way down. All right. And there we have it. My beautiful painting. Hopefully I can show it to you again when the sun's not shining. All right. So for the background, I'm going to choose this size 12 silver black velvet round brush and I like using this because it's it holds a lot of water so I can keep going without you know um, pausing too much and reloading my brush and also it's got very fine points so that I can go around the edges real nice so let's start by creating a nice big pool of that indigo all right, so lots of water here, a nice big pool, and you don't have to worry about measuring how much you need. You can always make it make some more, um, but it's nice to feel safe that you have lots, okay, lots. So water and indigo, and I'm going to dip a bit of that Prussian as well, because Prussian is quite bright. Uh, I like how um, vibrant it is. All right, so for this painting, I'll definitely be turning the painting round and round because uh, there's no way I can get to all the edges, so let's, let's go. All right, so some tips on painting backgrounds. Um, because watercolour dries really quickly, so you want to find sections that you can work on, and that is determined by your original painting. So I'm going to do like a white border frame. So I'm going to start working in this bottom right-hand corner, and I'm just going to frame it out from there to here. Right, and then just color it in. Color it in. And again, if you are using a good quality paper, 100% cotton, um, you shouldn't have to worry about too much uh, hard edges. If you're worried that the paint will dry too quickly, yada yada. You shouldn't have to worry about that because with 100% cotton paper, um, it's quite easy to re-wet. And like you said, you don't have to make it super perfect, but you want to just keep it nice and casual so it has that, you know, hand-painted effect. I like to put some music on and just work my way around this. And I like this because it's very therapeutic. You can just do it without thinking, you know, um, without stressing, about, without any making any decisions. Yes, yeah, what I'm saying. Oops. And you just kind of just working your way around that. Okay, I'm fussing a bit too much. I don't usually fuss this much, but I think there's this um, pressure <laughs> off the camera rolling. So somehow I'm fussing around this section a bit too much. Okay, let's stop. Uh, at this point, you know, um, 
backgrounds, it's always quite nice if you want to have extra gradient or whatever. So maybe drop a bit of a darker pigment here and there if you like. And spread it around or not. So there we go, I have that first corner done. So let's go on to just... And then I might speed this part up a little bit because um, if you're just watching it, it can be a bit boring. So I'm going to speed up. For a long time, I was very envious of people who paint on gouache or acrylic that they can have these beautiful backgrounds and then paint over, right? Paint their, their flowers over the background and the flowers will still be vibrant because of the opacity of acrylic and or gouache and I'll be like oh you know what a shame like we can't do that with watercolor watercolor background has to be um, sort of be super carefully done like what I'm doing now and I'm never gonna have patience for that blah 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 but then slowly I realized that I maybe have developed the patience and a bit of the skill to be more careful with my brush and then going around paintings like that is okay is actually not too bad so my watercolor paintings can still have that very finished feel of um, having a colored background and you can make your decision whether you want to fill all of it, like, you know, this bit here um, and those little white spaces that you've made. Some people do fill it in, some people don't. Some people fill a little bit and not, so you make your own little decision. I'm going to tackle that bit later on. Um, instead, I'm just going to go maybe up here and do this corner first. And you know what? I am actually feeling like this brush is a little bit too fat for me now. And I'm going to change it up to get the size 10. So that was a 12 and this is a 10. Because we're getting into some tighter spots here. Load up that brush. Mm, okay. Let's come back from that and have a gaze at the painting. So you've seen how I did it in sections. Um, and it's very important now to not go in to the semi-dry bits to mess around with it too much because like this, like what could happen is, you see this little section here? It was in this semi-dry stage and I went in and I don't know what I did with it and it created this harsh line, which actually kind of looks, um, you know, it's, it's definitely uh, forgiving and it's not, not something terrible, but you know, just so you know, that will happen. And if you really don't like that effect and it's gonna really annoy you, so don't do that. All right, I'm gonna go in with the rest of these empty bits. Okay. Um, I am noticing these white bits here and they're actually part of the flower. Um, but it's now at this point where it feels odd to have any white space. You know what I mean? Once you color it in the background, that's something you need to think about as well. If you paint in a loose floral um, style that has lots of white space and you put a background in, it can feel a bit like, what's that white space doing there? <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually get into that brown again. And I'm going to see if I can just layer some of that flower back into that white space. And I don't know how that will turn out. I mean, it should be fine. I mean, just imagine that as extra shadow layers, right? Yeah. A bit of white space, just not too much. Not too, like a big patch for no reason. All right, so there it is, okay? That's my latest thing that I like doing, putting a border background into your painting. Let me know if you think this looks good and if you're gonna give it a try. This is something you can totally do to any of your old paintings. 
um, and it's so fun and it's so satisfying. So that's it. That's the beautiful painting that I enjoyed painting. I hope you enjoyed painting along with me. Otherwise, thank you so much for following me and uh, liking my video um, and I'll see you in the next one.